Beware of false prophets who come to you in clothing of sheep, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. By their fruits you shall know them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. John Chrysostom says that Jesus is not implying that false prophets are heretics, but those who put on the cloak of virtue, and all the while in heart they are corrupt. He said that among heretics you will find goodness of life, but among those who are false prophets, this is never the case. End of the quote. And St. Jerome implies that false prophets are hypocrites, as he says, for false prophets can be understood of all who say one thing in word and manner, and another in deed. End of the quote. So we must be, be aware of false prophets that can do cause so much damage using the pelts of sheep in order to infiltrate and to destroy many, many lives, many souls, many minds and hearts. People who, without the grace of God, can, could be totally and thoroughly damaged for life. So how can we avoid becoming false prophets ourselves in addition to avoiding false prophets around us. The acquisition of the virtue of prudence comes to mind. This can help us to, to defend ourselves against the onslaught of false prophethood. What's prudence? Prudence is knowledge of how to act and how to conduct one's life rightly. I remember one Thomist said that prudence is like hitting the bullseye, right? So it's always, always on target in anything to hit it correctly. Truth, to conform to truth in every matter, in every way. St. Augustine says that prudence belongs to the knowing what to avoid and what to seek. This virtue is in the knowing faculty of the soul, but it's highly related to the appetitive faculty of the soul, which is the will, because the, the, the knowing commanding the will. So it's commanding the will toward objective good and also reveal truth. And so therefore, let us look at what is imprudence, because this may be, be able to help us to avoid being imprudent and thus becoming um, contrary to being a false prophet. Imprudence is a lack of prudence. And it's not just a lack of prudence, but it's a culpable lack of prudence. It's a sin that allows for a number of sinful ingredients because it's coming from the culpability. So these ingredients are the following, and we're going to explain a little bit on each one. Precipitation, thoughtlessness, inconstancy, negligence, and carnal prudence. The first one, let us look at Precipitation. So this is one ingredient that make, makes up imprudence. It's the inordinate rushing into an action under the impulse of will or passion. So it's, it's just what first comes to mind, what first comes to my senses, I act. A good example of this could be a, a chicken running around with his head chopped off. <laughs> the second ingredient to imprudence is thoughtlessness, which is the will you, willful failure to judge a situation rightly. 
because of contempt for or neglect of those things that correct judgment demands and depends. So even though one sees the truth, there's a willful rejection, a contempt or neglect to implement those things. For example, one may hate the fact that Latin is a sacred language and essential to the ancient Christian West. So in evaluating Western Christianity, every language is affirmed except for Latin. <laughs> so this person, even though it's just glaringly at you that you can't escape it, Latin is the ancient language of the Christian West. But because I hate Latin, so therefore we're going to affirm every single other language except for that one. That's an example. That's thoughtlessness. You know, and that's why Pope John XXIII, when he signed out an encyclical about endorsing Latin to be continued in the church, he did something very rarely that rarely popes ever did. He got up on St. Peter's Basilica's altar and signed it on the altar, which was always a traditionally uh, um, a gesture of complete willingness for this doctrine to be taught. When he signs an encyclical on the altar of St. Peter's. Um, but anyway, like a couple of months later, it all got thrown in the trash anyway. So, Okay, so another one is, another ingredient of imprudence is inconstancy. Inconstant. Which is the unwise ceasing or withdrawal from a good purpose that has been prudently taken. An example of this, I remember back in 1991 uh, when I started my classical humanities studies of, in Salamanca, Spain, in the seminary. Well, I didn't know Spanish very well, so they put me in charge of the laundry. <laughs> and, so, and then I twisted the arm of the superior to remove me from that duty since I didn't know how to communicate with the Spaniard employees. And so this was a bit of an inconstancy. That was my fault. I was imprudent. My superiors placed me there maybe to form virtue, to come out of my little shell, to learn Spanish, which is another, was, was another good thing at the time, uh, to serve the community, and also me embracing the vow of obedience, and so here I was telling the superior, I can't speak. <laughs> you know, I don't know what the person's saying, so we're burning all the clothes. You know. uh, but what a great imprudence. So sisters, don't be afraid. You know. So some, the famous superior who says, sister or brother or whatever, do you know how to take photos? Oh, I think I took one picture once ever. Oh, now you're the community's photographer. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Let us never be afraid of, of what prudence dictates, which is oh, legitimate obedience to even difficult things, for there's a reason for these things. Okay, another ingredient to imprudence is negligence. Lack of due care, absent solicitude in performing the practical duties of life. And often, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, this negligence is often venial sin. But it's mortal sin when you're dealing with something necessary for salvation. Complete remissness about the things of Almighty God. So when we're de negligent about our spiritual duties, then that's when it could become uh, mortal sin. You know. Could you imagine a sister going two years without going to confession? You know? <laughs> and so uh, you might have to uh, dust off the dust that's on the Baltimore Catechism and, and reread your catechism you know, about going to confession, which is obligatory once a year. But as Bishop Athanasius Schneider says, he said, we should adopt 
the Greek tradition, which is um, because it was unknown to go to frequent communion, so therefore uh, that's why it was only once a year mandated to go to confession. But the Greeks, since they they went to conf- communion often, like once a week or whatever, um, then they were mandated to go to confession at least once a month. Uh, okay, so our last ingredient of imprudence could be carnal prudence. And this might be um, the staggering element, the most frequent element of falling into imprudence. It's the regarding of visible goods as the chief goods of existence. So anything visible goods, the visible goods, the things that I see, the material things becomes the do-all, be-all of what I value. And holding of cardinal goods as a sole end or purpose of existing in this life. And very similar to carnal prudence is also a thing called trickery. It has a daughter which is called trickery or craftiness, lying when trying to achieve a goal. Because St. Gregory the Great says that carnal prudence and craftiness combine as one to form a single name, and he calls it worldly prudence. So let us pray, therefore, for church authorities because of the, the, um, the massive imprudence that is being committed today. Let us pray for our leaders, both civil and church leaders, and that they may, they may move beyond this imprudence that is halting the church, destroying the church from within. And it's also the modus vivendi of, of the false prophets And this imprudence also is damaging the governing of the flock of Christ. And many evils arise from it. Remember when St. Paul was leaving Miletus to go back to Jerusalem? Um, He called the Ephesians to come to him because Ephesus was not too far away. And as he was saying goodbye to them, he says, Among your very ranks will come out from the elders wolves that will come out and trying to destroy the church. And he said that with great grief in his heart, knowing that lots of the fruits in which he labored and he shed tears and even blood was going to be destroyed. Not totally, but a great percentage And that's why St. Paul warned them, hold fast to what I have taught you, as he told the Ephesians. But also let us be aware that we too can become imprudent in our own handling of our minds and our hearts regards to our vocation, regards to our obedience. Let us ask Jesus at the communion rail what we prayed in the opening Colic prayer. Put far, put from us all that might be harmful and give us all that will be profitable. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.